Hello, welcome back to Project Air. I'm James, and this week we are building a helicopter. Yep, it's not exactly your standard helicopter though. Helicopters are complex things, or at least most of them tend to be. Tipjet helicopters do away with gearboxes and centrally driven rotor shafts. Instead, these aircraft propel their blades using jet nozzles that spin the rotors. These jets can be turbojets, ramjets, or gas thrusters, which make tipjet helicopters very cool indeed. Although not a true tipjet, one notable example of this kind of aircraft was the Rotodyne. This VTOL airliner of the 1960s spun up its autogyro blades on takeoff and landing using engines mounted to its huge rotors. I find the tipjet helicopter a fascinating piece of aviation technology, which hasn't really been talked about much or investigated here on YouTube. So this video is about me designing and building this helicopter to see if I can get it to lift off the ground. Now, although this looks absolutely ridiculous, there's no rule or scientific theory that says that this whole machine here can't do the same as this propeller. If I can get the lift, the weight, and the balance just right, I should be able to get the aircraft into the air. I'll just need to get it to spin at some ridiculously high speeds to do it. So keep watching if you'd like to see me go through the process of researching, designing, and building this aircraft as well as, of course, taking it out to a test facility and flying it for the very first time. Now, I'm a bit of a history geek, and a while ago I came across a load of videos on Tipjet helicopters, and that got me thinking properly about doing this project. As previously mentioned, on a tip jet, the conventional drive shaft is replaced by rotor mounted jet units. Although we think of helicopters today as having a fairly standard layout, back in the 50s, helicopters were still pretty new. No one knew what the best configuration was to build a helicopter in, and what was the best way to power one. Some thought that tip jets were definitely the future, but it was actually far earlier than the 1950s that this type of craft was envisioned. Ludwig Wittgenstein worked on a design of propeller with small jets on the tips of the blades all the way back in 1911. This was while he studied aeronautical engineering as a student at the University of Manchester, which, as it happens, is not actually that far away from me. With a tip jet helicopter, the jet units eliminate the need for using a tail rotor. This is because no torque is exerted on the fuselage beneath the wing. Other advantages of a tip jet include improved stability and reduced vibrations, as well as simplicity. As usual, Germany was pretty on it when it came to developing this radical technology. Dornier and a few other manufacturers produced some interesting designs, some of which were ultralight types, whilst others were more full-on helicopters that could carry multiple people. Talking of heavy lifting, Lifters, a special mention must be given to this absolute monstrosity created by Howard Hughes. I mean, who else would create something this insane? I mean, it's obviously going to be Howard Hughes. The XH-17 still holds the record for the largest helicopter ever flown. Its blades rotated at just 88 revolutions per minute, meaning that you could see each blade whiz around individually with the naked eye. Unfortunately, tip jets are noisy, rather inefficient, and have some interesting gyroscopic issues relating to the large inertia of the rotors. All of this helped to prevent them from becoming mainstream, but it doesn't mean that they don't make great flying machines. I mean, look at this madman. He can even fly it hands-free. Stripping away all of the non-essentials, we're actually left with a fairly straightforward design to build. All it consists of are two big rotary wings, which go around and create lift. These are essentially aeroplane wings, but the only difference is that they're going around in a circle. The main hub will need some sort of landing gear to take off from, and that's basically it. It's one big monocopter going around like a Catherine wheel, and hopefully taking to the skies. Now to find out how big the blades need to be and how fast they need to spin, we need to look into a simple lift equation. Succinctly, while designing the helicopter, I needed to predict what the overall weight of the craft would be. Basing this on the mass of my materials and electronics, I estimated that the whole helicopter would be around one kilogram. I didn't want to have the blades whizzing around at ridiculously high speeds, like some full-size helicopters, as the forces involved on the external tip jets would be quite extreme, and I didn't want them tearing away from the aircraft in a spectacular explosion. Knowing this, I could start plugging some figures into this lift formula for helicopters. Sticking the numbers in, I arrived at a wing area and rotational speed that would happily lift over a kilogram, in theory. If I were to increase the speed by over the 10 meters a second, more lift would be gained. Likewise, if I were to somehow increase the lift coefficient by pitching the blades, again more lift would be gained. However, this is all probably inaccurate guesswork. Time to build something real.
Originally, I wanted to design the rotary wings using a lightweight Depron skin over plywood ribs. I also designed some circular wing caps that would act as gearing blocks. These would give me the ability to alter the angle of attack of the entire wing using holes and pins passed through the ends of the ribs. This machine needed quite a lot of wire management as the control and power wires had to be fed through the wings to the batteries and RC receiver in the middle. The four cell batteries I used were also positioned at the center where the centrifugal forces would be at their weakest. Soon after moving onto the Depron wings, I realized that I hadn't planned this whole construction very well and had to move on to a plan B. The foam board wings that I went on to make were much heavier than the originals, which added to the overall weight of the aircraft, something I hadn't factored in. This would mean I'd have to get the helicopter spinning much faster than planned, but I didn't actually know whether it was balanced enough. So the time is now, we're just about to test the wing for the very first time in this uh, not ideal environment. Obviously we're going to go outside with it properly later. This is just a quick test to see if it will rotate properly. It's not gonna take off, at least I hope not. We have a pretty sketchy setup. We've got a bag here protecting the craft against this light, just in case it smacks into that. Over here we've got my backpack. Hopefully if it does fall over, it will hit one of those but I just really hope it's not gonna break the uh, the fan. Okay, where should I stand? <laughs> it really wants to go. I don't really know how far to take it. So I'm not really, I don't want to see how much lift it's got, I just want to see if it's vibrating. Okay, uh, that, was, uh, that was a little bit too fast there, I think. Um, let's take it outside. Confronted by the February weather, I quickly decided to change my plans. Thankfully, I had access to a nice big workshop next door where I could try at least to do a little hop. If the aircraft survived that long, that is. Okay, we're just about to test it for the very first time. It's very windy outside, as you can hear. But we've thankfully uh, got this space to, uh, to destroy. <laughs> Going for launch. Be aware it might explode. Okay, I think I might have to adjust some things. <laughs> I hope there's nothing broken on it. Oh. Okay. Oh, hang on, I've not plugged it in yet. Take two. Oh, he's walking! <laughs> oh. It was taking off! That was amazing! Oh, 
Ready? Okay, clearly there's quite a lot of work to be done here, but it's looking quite promising. I'm not halting progress on this project just yet. In two to three weeks time, I'm hoping to make another video once I've made some modifications to the aircraft to see if we have improved it at all. This was a considerably different challenge to the things that I'm used to making, so uh, yes, it was enjoyable, even though it was uh, quite tricky and different, and also terrifying at the same time, uh, with that thing spinning around. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I did cower behind a door at one point, just to, uh, to, to take some safety precautions. Probably should have thought about that first, but um, yes. We put ourselves in danger for uh, for progress. Balance, or the lack of balance in some cases, wasn't as much of an issue as I was expecting. I think we were in tolerances in, in terms of um, it, it wasn't catastrophically unbalanced. It could cope with the slight oscillations and not shake itself to pieces, which was good. Obviously, the weight was the crux of the issues with this particular Mark I uh, rotary wing. And I think that ideally, in an ideal world, I would completely rebuild and redesign this to make it far, far lighter using perhaps balsa wood for the wings and some sort of much lighter electronics, smaller EDFs, smaller batteries, etc. but with a similar wing area. On this particular wing, it was going at far greater speeds than I anticipated when I was designing it, of course. So, um, yes, first of all, a win that it didn't fall to pieces and kill someone, uh, but it, of course it was very much on the edge of taking off at its, its highest uh, RPM, so not ideal, but with some slight weight saving measures in place, I think we'll be able to, um, to get this thing airborne in the next video. In terms of saving the weight, I think I'm going to bin the flimsy landing gear um, and go with some other form of launching it, maybe some sort of tube that it leaves behind on the ground. If you have any suggestions for modifications to the aircraft to make it lighter, then of course post them down below in a comment. By the way, a massive thank you to all of my Patreons and of course all of my subscribers here on YouTube. Um, I really appreciate you following my projects and showing your interest and um, yeah, encouraging me to, to do crazy things like this. I've got some really uh, interesting things in the works planned for the next few months. Um, including some multi-part projects and in turn making more frequent videos. Of course if you're new here then please do click the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing these projects unfold. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you on the next one.